Rich People Problem by Kevin Kwan. Bettina Ortiz Rimenia was a former Miss Venezuela and Miss Universe runner-up and the wife of the Miami Auto Parts tycoon, Herman Ortiz Rimenia. She is not accustomed to waiting and at every restaurant she chose to grace with her presence, she was always greeted with reverence and whisked to the exact table she desired. Today, she wanted the corner table on the terrace at Sip Sip, her favorite lunch spot on Harbor Island. She wanted to sit on one of the comfy orange canvas director's chair and stare out at the gently lapping turquoise water while eating her kale Caesar salad. But there was a large noisy group taking up the entire terrace and they didn't seem in much hurry to leave. Bettina glared at the tourists who's happily savoring their lunch in the sun. In her thoughts, look how tacky they were. The woman overly tanned, wrinkled and saggy. None of them were properly lifted or botoxed. She felt like walking up to them and hand out her dermatologist business card. And the men were dressed in all rumpled shirts and shorts. Why did such people have to come here? The three and a half mile long paradise with its pristine pink sandwiches was one of the best kept secrets in the Caribbean. A haven for the very rich, filled with quaint little wood houses painted in shades of sherbet, charming boutiques, chic oceanfront mansions turned into inns, and a five star restaurant to rival St. Bart's. Bettina stormed into the kitchen, the fringe on her crocheted bushy cotton top shaking fiercely as she made a beeline for the woman with a shock of pixie cut, blonde hair manning the main stove. Bettina sighed to the owner of the restaurant. Julie, honey, what's the deal, yo? I've waited more than 15 minutes for my table. Sorry, Bettina. It's been one of those days. The party on the terrace showed up first, just before you did. Julie replied as she handed a bottle of spicy cut chili to wait so But the terrace is your prime spot. Why on earth did you let those tourists take up all that space? Well, that tourist in the red fishing hat is Duke Glencora. His party just voted over from Windermere. That's his oil high school. You see? I'm not impressed by big boats, Bettina Huff, although secretly, she was rather impressed by people with big title. From the kitchen window, she surveyed the party assembled on the terrace with new eyes. These aristocratic types were such a strange breed. Sure, they had their Seville row suits and their heirloom charas, but when they traveled, they looked so painfully frumpy. It was only then, that Bettina noticed three tan well-built men in fitted white t-shirts and black Kevlar pants sitting at the adjacent table. The guys weren't eating but sat watchfully sipping glasses of seltzer water. I assume that's the Duke's security detail. They couldn't be more obvious. Don't they know that we are all billionaires here in Vreeland? And this isn't how we roll. Bettina tottered. Those bodyguards belong to the Duke's special guest. They did a whole sweep of the restaurant before the party arrived. They even searched my walk-in freezer. See that Chinese fellow seated at the end of the table. Bettina squinted through her Dior XT sunglasses at the portly, balding, 70-something Asian man dressed in a nondescript white shirt sleeve, golf shirt, and grey trousers. Oh. I didn't even notice him. Am I supposed to know who he is? That's Alfred Shan. Julie said in a hushed tone. Bettina giggled. He looked like their chauffeur. Doesn't he look like the guy that used to drive Jane Wayman around the Falcon Crest? Julie, who was trying to focus on searing a cut of tuna to perfection, shook her head, a tight deep smile. From what I hear, that chauffeur is the most powerful man. What's his name again? 